thing is, until you can erase three Februaries, shut up. Bang! Quality over quantity. LeBron has beaten some of the best competition in NBA history. He's the goat emoji. I will not cuss. I will not cuss. I will not swear. I will not swear. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is the Brian Snow Show. I will not cut. I will not cut. I will not. I will not swear. I will not swear. I will not cuss. I will not swear. I will not swear. I was like, oh hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Brian Snow Show, man. I need to just jump right in and uh, explain what happened earlier this afternoon. Um, as I admitted aloud, I had three of these full of coffee, and I was. Flying right along. Uh, morning show went great. I got a full night's sleep. I was flying right, right along, and I was doing fine. And then that happened, and my body just decided, you know what? We are as mad as hell, and we can't take this anymore. And I simply crashed. That's all. I was tired. I felt it. Uh, the first two breaks that producer Drew and Sensei Drew took, um. I just I just got tired. I mean, I sat here in the chair and I slept for three minutes, but quick. I quickly got back up and uh, was rolling along in the other segment. And I decided at that time I couldn't I couldn't hold it. And I went over here to the couch here in the office and I passed out. That's all that that is all that happened. So an adjustment in schedule for sports senseis will be forthcoming. Um, I've talked to Drew. I have to. Is that is that pumpkin? Is that you, pumpkin? Yeah, two of my three uh, kitties are here in the house, and I think they're going to uh, somewhat join me for the afternoon show. Speaking of joining me, producer Clark will join me as we talk all things CFL. He'll join at the bottom of the hour. But uh, that's what happened. I simply crashed. And I couldn't. My my body just couldn't hold up anymore. And believe me, I tried. I really, really, really tried, but couldn't hold it. And that's what happened. There's a subject that I brought up uh, during the morning show with Chris Bass that I'm going to somewhat talk about. But at the same time, I, I'm just going to lay some praise on the one woman who saved my life. And that one woman is Jody K. Snow, my wife. Were it not, were it not for Jody, um, I simply wouldn't be here. That's as simple as it gets. I wouldn't be here because she came into my life in 2018 and uh, changed everything. Man, did she did she change everything? I mean, there were times I thought of checking out, plain and simple, because I didn't think anyone, you know, wanted me or wanted to love me. And then Jody showed up and said, "I do." That's basically she basically said, "I do." And I said, "Okay." Um, and I'm thinking. All right, now what? But as we celebrate, um, I'm gonna cry because y'all know how y'all know how much I love Jody. As we celebrate our anniversary this month, as well as her birthday in less than two weeks. I continue and will continue to heap praise on my beautiful, beautiful wife. Um, I cannot, I would not be here without her. And the subject that I brought up during the morning show was interracial relationships. Um, why did I bring that? Well, it was a backup subject off of uh, what Chris Bates was talking about, and I will interject uh, mentality into this also, and that'll make Victor smile. Men are under attack, period. 
for whatever decision they make and whatever they want to do. And it's a system designed to fail. Hold on a second, y'all. All right, fuck it. There you go, buddy. Go on. Ugh, okay. Sorry about that. I had to let one of the kitties out. But it's a it's a it's a system that's designed for people to fail. More to the point, it's a system designed for men to fail. And as I mentioned this morning, one of the most taboo things, one of the most taboo things, well, simply put, is um, interracial dating. But you know something? I really don't care anymore. I don't care. I don't freaking care. I never have and I never will care. And to answer the question of a lot of people, we used to live, of course, we used to live in North Carolina, lived there for two years. To answer the question of a lot of people, and thank you, Victor, for this, praise be to the legendary Dr. K, she means everything to me. I was unsure. I had a moment of uncertainty, Christmas night, 2018. And while Joni was asleep, I went in the, we were living in Terre Haute at the time. I went in the kitchen and I called Cole. I, I called Cole Sports and I was crying because I didn't know what to do, what to think, because there was a lot of backlash. There was a lot of backlash from some of the residents of Terre Haute and some of the folks at uh, Indiana State where she worked once upon a time. So Cole yanked, basically virtually yanked me aside and said, I have two questions for you. All right, lay them on me. Number one, does she make you happy? Oh, hell yeah. Number two, does she treat you good? Yes. Then what the hell are you worried for? And at that point, Cole sounded like my late father. I got my answer. I mean, from the beginning with Jody, I was all in. Don't get it twisted. But there were points when we first got together, I was unsure of what to do and how to handle things because I knew there would be a lot of backlash, especially in society, you know, um, with me being with someone opposite my race. But I never cared about race in the first place. I never have and I never will. That's me. That's just me growing up, man. That's just me growing up. I didn't care. And to this day, I don't care. I never have cared. What the hell am I going to? What the hell am I going to care for? And that's that. I'll tell you all a story that I've told on different channels, but I will tell it here. One afternoon, Jody and I went to lunch. We were in North Carolina. We went to lunch and we, y'all know, we, we just, we have fun wherever we go. But we went to this place called Cookout. And my wife heard the voice which was a black woman, speak ye the truth and shame the devil. That's how I feel. And Jody must have detected something that I didn't because he, she immediately turned to me and said, get your wallet out quick. I said, what? What's going on? Boy, was she ever right. She was right. I'm going to make an adjustment here with my camera. Man, she called that right when she called that right when it happened sorry for that and yes victor it was a burger place place called cookout like i said jody called that immediately and and, and said get your mall get your wallet quick i didn't know what was going on but i got my i, I got my wallet and then i pulled up to the window we pulled up to the window jody was driving and saw the look on her face and again this was a this is a black woman who put it who 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 
was like this. I'll give you a hundred guesses as to what popped in her mind. And I will lay this in on you. All of them are correct. I won't say any of them here. I'll say them on Snowman Unfiltered. But as I said, I'll give you a hundred guesses to what she was thinking. And we're talking about the person who took our order and uh, check this out. Not one guess of what they were thinking would be wrong. Not one. Why am I telling this story? Because, A, I felt it in my heart when I had Chris Bass on this morning, on Snowman in the Morning. And, B, I want you all to get an understanding of what we went, what we go through, not went, go, of what we go through through the states that we've lived in, which is Indiana and North Carolina. I indeed have a blended family, and I love every person within this blended family, my children, my grandchildren, and, of course, my wife. And, Victor, I'm going to make you laugh and cringe at the same time, but the look on this woman's face reminded me of Uncle Lori or Uncle Foot, as, 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 as we often called her. If I'm lying, I'm flying. That's not the only incident we went through. I'm just highlighting the best ones. Here's one. We went to Denny's in uh, Henderson, North Carolina. And there were two occasions we went to Denny's and got discriminated, got discriminated against. Hell, if y'all listen to my voice and hear how I speak, I've been discriminated against my whole life. But I took it in, as fuel. The first time, this is when we, I want to say a week after we got to Henderson, you know, Jody looked at me and said, look, we need a night to ourselves. Hey, no complaints. Where do you want to go? Let's go to Denny's. Let's have some dinner and let's have fun. No problem. We did. Went to Denny's there in Henderson. And. We were just having a ball. We were just cracking up every time. We were just we were just cracking jokes. Just having fun, being us. Really being us. I mean, nothing to worry not, nothing to worry about for a couple of hours. We were just having fun. We were just being us. Then this happened. Um Jody gets ready to check us out, and I had to run to the bathroom. So I ran to the bathroom. I came back, and when Jody went to pay the bill to check us out, four black women came in, looked at her, looked at me, and I let y'all finish the thought. And I'll say again, I'll give y'all 100 guesses. And not one of them would be wrong. Not one. That was the first time we went. The second time we went, we were seated. And the server that took our order, A, was a black woman, and B, kept walking past us. Now, I'm telling these stories to highlight what Jody and I have been through in five years. These are just highlights, y'all. These are just highlights. And again, I'll give you a hundred guesses. I'll give y'all a hundred guesses. And good good afternoon to Hawk TV, David 3000, Victor Locke, and Ryan McCoffey. If you've seen pictures online of me and Jody, y'all know what we go through on both sides of the ball. On both, both sides of the ball. I mean, she took our order on the run. She brought us our food and was on the run. Here's the thing. Here, here is, and, and Victor, you're going to love this one. Here's the kicker. That same server went and talked to every, went and spent time at every other table in her area except ours. 
How's that? I'll say it again. This server went and spent time at every other table except ours. What? Every other table. I'll keep saying it. And you're right, Victor. This is a Steve Harvey with a little Bishop Bullwinkle sprinkled on it. This server, who had a nasty attitude from jump, went and spent a little time at every other table being personable except ours. Brought our food and jet. Took our order and jet. Brought our drinks and jet. No personability, personability whatsoever. I hope I said that right. So we both were like, screw this. We're not coming back. You know, we had more su success blending in with people if we went to Durham, if we went to Raleigh, if we went to Charlotte, if we went to Chapel Thrill, a.k.a. Chapel Hill, Greensboro, Winston-Salem. Wilmington, because that was our first big trip when we drove from Henderson to Wilmington to get some fish. And believe me, I got so many more adventures. So, so many more adventures. But I will do all of those on an, on another, on an, I'll do all those at another time. And it's crazy to think, for a lot of people, it's crazy to think that we are still, Jody and I are still tight. Because I can tell you from experience, and Victor can back me up here, there were a lot of people that expected us to fail. A lot. Well, nah, 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 nah. All that did, plus the health problems we both have gone through, especially me battling cancer, all it did was bring us closer together. So, nah, 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 nah. Take that, haters. Back in a minute. The thing is, until you can erase three Februaries, shut up. Where sports is the base. Life and fun are the results. This is The Brian Snow Show. The original Think Drink is back. Level up with proven ingredients formulated to crush your competition. No gimmicks, no jitters, no messing around. Just high potency results that keep you moving day or night. There's a new nerd in town, and we came to play. Nerd Focus, smarter than energy. One of the great things about ordering meals from Mother of Macros is that you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Click the national or local delivery link to access the menu and we'll ship the meals right to your door. We understand you won't always have time to plan, shop, prepare, and cook to provide healthy nutrition for your family. So the process is simple and saves you hours. We know you're busy, so our meals are professionally prepared and packaged. You only need to heat them up and enjoy. We provide macro-balanced, delicious meals, chock full of fresh, local ingredients with none of the stuff you don't want to eat. Plus, our menu changes every week, keeping your taste buds wanting more. We take care of your meals so you can worry about everything else on your list. Mother of Macros. This planet has been great to me. It's given me gifts that I can't even explain. It's given me adventures and, and memories I'll never forget. And, and Battleborn, I think, has given me the opportunity to go beyond 
and, and give, give something back. How can I be a better custodian to this planet and the place I live? That's where I am with Battleborn. Let's make the planet a better place. Sure, we all know ghosts exist. I feel I'm, I'm getting a really dark energy. But if you trying to hunt them, there's one simple rule you gotta follow. What the hell was that? Guys, hurry up and get the hell out of there. No matter what happens, stay calm. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God! Oh, God! Oh, hell no! Hey, man, man, what's up? Okay. That's a balloon. Um, it looked like it was a demon. Wow. We be fly for nothing. We be fly for nothing. O E O mucho. Really. So where are we going? A haunted pinata shop. What? An old Korean brothel. Oh lord. A funeral home in Compton. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like us, do you? <laughs> It's business. Official paranormal operations, baby. We got infrared cameras set up all over the place. Whatever's in there, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Y'all down with it? What the f is this? I have a robot strapped to my abdomen. What the hell is going on? Are you with us right Damn, now? You okay? Guys, we got action. I feel like something's in here. Don't nobody want you with us. Man, they got some going down in there. It could be you a succubus. Suck you, huh? It's an energy that feeds upon you in a sexual way. Like... Not with the teeth like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can fly for nothing. All right, investigation's over. This bitch what? is haunted as Oh, welcome to those of you watching on CSTV, serving Northern Nevada and streaming around the world. Our West Coast audience is going to be thrilled that we're going to include the CFL in our coverage. And to help out, here's one of my chief officers on the CFL. That's producer Clark in the house, back after a long, long, busy stint for both of us. My brother, how are you, man? I'm doing great, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Did you see what the Lions did last night? Vernon Adams, and we talked about this at the end of last season, Vernon Adams had to come in with an attitude of picking defenses apart. Save the interception. He picked Calgary. He tore, he tore Calgary to shreds last night. Yeah, definitely. And Vernon Adams is a guy who's had a really, really interesting career path. And Brian, last year when we were talking about the CFL throughout the season, he, his name came up a lot, but for a lot of different reasons. Um, he's been a guy who's always had that talent. He's always had the ability he has the arm. He has the athleticism. Uh, he seems like a great teammate. He's always been that guy, but he's always been in the wrong place at the wrong time, it seems. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, he was in Montreal, rejuvenated that franchise as a starting quarterback, but lost his job. And then kind of just didn't, nothing really happened from there. He went to BC as a backup quarterback uh, to Nathan Rourke, who's now in the NFL. He had an amazing season last year. He did. Uh, and there was a lot of there was a lot of questions about Vernon Adams is, you know, he's been around, but he's never quite cemented himself as that guy. Can he be that guy? And last night, I think, was a bit of a message from him uh, to the rest of the league to just say, hey, I'm here and I can do this. And I got this team on my back and let's go. Uh, you know, he was 27 for 35 last night with 288 yards and two touchdowns, which, uh, you know, to a lot of American listeners who or viewers who might you know, be accustomed to 400 yard games and three or four touchdowns as a big game. This was a big game. Uh, yeah. 288 yards and two touchdowns is a big game. Plus he had a rushing touchdown as well. Um, so this guy's the real deal and he's going to put this team uh, in a great position to win uh, each and every week. I feel like I think BC has a really good shot at maybe surprising a few people with how high they finish in the Western division in the CFL. Um, and you know, it all starts with Vernon Adams and, and then it goes from there. They got Dominique Grimes who had a great game last night, uh, eight catches for 118 yards, two of those being touchdowns. Um, he seems like he's the guy and he's been around the league for a while as well. Very talented receiver. Uh, and they got some weapons out there. So it's going to be really interesting to see now on the other side, you know, we talked about how good BC and Vernon Adams was, uh, the Calgary Stampeders didn't look like themselves at all in week one. 
Um, their quarterback, you know, 20 completions out of 36, only 56%. If you're only completing 56% of your passes in the CFL, that's, that's a rough, rough day at the office for you. Uh, you know, we said Vernon Adams was 77%. With the amount of space out there on the field, because again, in case, you know, some people out there aren't familiar, the CFL field is wider, uh, it's, it's longer, there's more space to do stuff. So, you know, to have a lower than 70% complete rate rating, completion rating isn't usually looked at as a good thing. Uh, in this league, you should be clicking pretty good. Um, and he just had a, he had a rough night. Jake Mayer had a rough night. This is his third year now in the CFL. He has the full reins of that franchise now in Calgary after Bo Levi Mitchell moved on, and we'll get to that probably in a sec. Um, he's a longtime starting quarterback there. Jake Mayer showed signs of uh, great promise last year, and I'm not going to write him off after one game, but uh, definitely not the best night from the Calgary Stampeders uh, overall last night. It's the post Bo Levi Mitchell era in Calgary, and that game was at McMahon Stadium last night. Did it seem like the Calgary offense minus Bo Levi was out of sync, and it's going to take a bit for Jake Mayer to like really, really tighten tighten this team up offensively? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was is that Calgary has been uh, a very dominant rushing team over the last, I'm going to say, decade. Brian, uh, last decade they've kind of been the standard setters for the rushing game in the NFL in the CFL. Uh, obviously, other other running backs have had huge years outside of Calgary, but the Stampeders often define themselves by their rush first, and then they attack you with that pass because mm-hmm. Bo Levi Mitchell was just a he was that guy who could just pick you apart uh, yeah. at will. But they always establish the run; they have forever. And last night they only rushed the ball by my math thirteen times, yeah. um, and that's you know. A lot less than BC did, that's for sure. But also, uh, Kadeem Carey, who's one of the premier running backs in this league, uh, he only had seven rushes for 39 yards. That's just a very low number for him. He's usually a 100-yard type of guy. Uh, He's very dynamic. He's explosive. And their backup, Peyton Logan, who had a really good year last year, also only rushed the ball three times. And, um, you know, I was talking to a Stampeders season ticket holder this morning. Uh, You know, it says three, three rushes for 34 yards. You think as a backup, that's not terrible. But 18 of those yards came on the last play of the game when nothing mattered. Yeah. Uh, so, so you look at it that way, and it changes your perspective. They, they didn't rush the ball well, uh, didn't give Jake Mayer much of an option there. And, yes, they, they definitely will have to figure something out. And, um, I'm not, again, one week, I'm not going to write off a franchise like Calgary. Right. But they definitely showed a lot of signs of maybe early concerns, if that's a, a conservative way to put it. And on the defensive side for Calgary, allowing BC, you know, uh, Calgary had the ball first, marched right down the field, but Paredes, who's been so accurate, 90% rate, missed the field goal. And BC took full advantage, marched right down the field, and stuck it in the end zone for a quick 6-0 lead. All that on the shoulders of Vernon Adams. If if you all go back and watch the tape last night, Vernon Adams just seemed unstoppable but if you look at the calgary defensive side there are no and i'm not saying this because of a lack of talent i'm saying from what i saw with the game there are no leaders on defense for calgary and no one like put the game on their shoulders and said look ride with me we will figure this out especially after halftime when bc just came out and marched the ball up and down the field on calgary and that last field goal gave them a 10 point advantage when it looked like calgary is going to get back in the game yeah, definitely some some interesting times in Calgary. Again, they I, I said they they their identity has been rushing the ball for the last ten years. Even though they had a guy like Bo Levi Mitchell, their other identity is that their defense is always among the top in the league, and mm-hmm. they've had a lot of turnover because um, we we've always compared you know in Saskatchewan here we've always compared the Stampeders to the New England Patriots uh, right. in that. You know, their their leader, so to speak, uh, Huffnagel, John Huffnagel, um, he's always been the type to let a guy go who might be at the top of his game, but you let him go one year early, maybe he'll have a good year or two somewhere else. But mm-hmm. rather than holding on to a guy until he's too old or can't do it anymore, they will let them go one year early. And that's been happening quite a bit over the last couple of years in terms of turnover for Calgary. They've had a lot of really, really high-end players that they have you know, let go one year early, so to speak. Um, right. And I think that that turnover is just going to take a little bit on the defense to kind of catch up to itself. 
I think there's a lot of great playmakers on that defense. I look at a guy like Cameron Judge. He's a very good linebacker in this league. He was with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for a few years. Uh, mm-hmm. Very, very athletic. He's a freak. He can get everywhere on the field. He can he can rush the passer. He can drop back in, in coverage. He can do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, Micah Always, one of my favorite players in the CFL. He's a linebacker as well. So they have a lot of talent. Uh, they have a good defensive line. They have good linebacking core. They always have good cornerbacks. They've never had a problem with their secondary. I think it's just going to take some time for that. Just those couple of new faces to kind of gel and mesh, and that defense should be among one of the better ones again uh, as we progress into this season. It's a long season, 21 weeks. It is. <laughs> it is. Speaking of the West Division, the defending West Division champs open defense of that title tonight when they host the Hamilton Tiger Cats, 8.30 kickoff at IG Field. If you're Winnipeg, having the Grey Cup in your hands and then suddenly Toronto snatching it off of the off of the effort of backup uh Chip Kelly uh, excuse me, Chad Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> and have and having that snatched away from you, A, that left a very sour taste in their mouth, and B, I wouldn't be surprised if it starts tonight. They're marched to a fourth straight division title. With this game at with this game versus Hamilton, yeah, the Winnipeg uh, Blue Bombers Vengeance Tour. I'm not looking forward to as a as a fan of the team next door to them. Uh, yeah, you know that. They, yeah, they've they've been the team. Now I said it just a minute ago. Calgary is usually the team that lets go of somebody one year early rather than one year late. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg is the exact opposite. They've been keeping this team together. They've been keeping the group together now for four or five years. They have some of the best players in this league on this roster. They have the consensus best quarterback right now in Zach Caleros. They have the consensus best defensive end in Willie Jefferson. They have the consensus best middle linebacker in Adam Big Hill. Uh, They have multiple weapons at receiver. They have a great running game. Uh, I mean, I could go on. One of the best offensive linemen in in Stanley Bryant and also the rest of the group, one of the best groups. So, you know, we talk about – well, last year, one of the biggest things we talked about throughout the season was just how good Winnipeg was top to bottom. And you can't make a mistake against these guys because they will just bury you. They will bury you. Uh, and Hamilton is coming in now. They've made one of the bigger offseason splashes in bringing in Bo Levi Mitchell, which we talked about right. with the Calgary Stampeders earlier. So mm-hmm. Bo Levi is there now. Uh, and not only does he want to you know, make a statement for his new fan base, Winnipeg's been one of his biggest rivals for years in the West yes. uh, with Calgary. So he wants to beat those guys just as bad as almost anybody in this league. Uh, and to do it in week one on the road, uh, I know that Bo Levi is just itching to get on that field tonight and get this game going. So, uh, again, I think Winnipeg, they continue to be the cream of the crop, although they did lose last year in the Grey Cup, like you kind of mentioned earlier. Uh, Toronto, oddly enough, not playing this week. This is the Grey Cup champions not playing in week one. Very weird decision, uh, but here nor there, uh, Winnipeg, I think, is uh, – they still feel like they are the champions, I think, in that yes. city, in that fan base, on that team. I think they still have that mentality. They have mostly the same group. They've added pieces here and there where they need to, and, uh, you know, Winnipeg could be one of those teams where, you know, a 15-win season isn't out of the question for me out of 18 games. So this this could be a special year, and – a big way to do that would be to shut the mouth of Bo Levi Mitchell in week one. I, I use my, my good pal Rod Peterson's call, Bo Levi, shut your mouth. Uh, this could be one of those nights. <laughs> God, I, I, love, I love Rod Peterson. I love the, the Rod squad. Y'all had a great, had a great, great, great show today. But uh, if Bo Levi Mitchell in Hamilton, as you mentioned, his biggest rival is Winnipeg. But um, there's a fellow in Winnipeg. Besides Zach Kalaros, who I fell in love with by the name of Dalton Schoen, who showed out last year. And there were rumblings at the start of the season of how good this kid can be. I guarantee you no one expected that to happen last year for Dalton Schoen. No. And, you know, that this happens probably once or twice a year uh, around the CFL. And that's that's one of the charming things about the CFL, right, is, you know, these guys coming up. Uh, from the States or wherever they're coming from. Right. They're all very, very good. But none of us know their names until they make their name for themselves. And Dalton Schoen last year was probably the best example of that across the CFL where um, he kind of came out of nowhere. He wasn't necessarily a starter at the beginning of the year. He wasn't taking anybody's job. 
but he right. made himself very on like he he put the league on notice right away and just kept performing and that's one of the biggest things about the CFL especially when it comes to receivers um is that if you can just be consistent and just catch the ball uh when it's thrown to you you'll probably make yourself a good career in this league if you can stick Absolutely. around if you're athletic and you can you can run good routes and you're smart and you can just catch the ball you don't have to be the fastest you don't have to be the tallest but if you can just stay consistent and be that guy you'll have a good career in this league and it's always good to see every like i said every year there's always one or two probably maybe even three some years that pop up and just take the league by storm and he was a great example of that last year such a fun guy to watch uh and you know a good story behind him as well so yeah he's one of those guys and i you know I, with Winnipeg, like I said, they have a lot of weapons, but uh, he definitely eases that a little bit because of how good he's been. Dalton showing in his second year with the Bombers out of Kansas State, the former Wildcat. Let's go to Saturday, 7 p.m. kickoff at Percival Molson Stadium, the Ottawa Red Blacks and the Montreal Alouettes. A couple of teams that you know need to get them need to really get themselves together. The uh, Montreal Alou. Uh, Montreal Alouettes welcome a new quarterback, Cody Fajardo. You're familiar with him with his time with the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That's a question for you in the chat. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's take a look at the Ottawa Red Blacks. How do they pick themselves back up after a season where they just got absolutely pulverized? Yeah, we that was a big thing with them last year. You know, every week we had this chat about Ottawa just not quite being able to find their footing um, right. and never quite got themselves over the hump last year in terms of just seemed like every game they were a step behind or they were, you know, down early and couldn't come back or whatever it happened to be with Ottawa last year. And this year, um, you know, they have made quite a few changes. They've changed some of their coaching staff. They've changed a lot of their personnel. They've brought back a couple of different quarterback options, obviously Jeremiah Masoli, but he's not going to be ready this week. He had an right. injury, I think, in camp, so he's going to be out for a couple weeks. But Nick Arbuckle is there. Now, there's some storylines with Nick Arbuckle because he was brought to Ottawa. They let him go, and now he's back. So, uh, you know, I hope for him he's a great guy. Uh, we've had him on our show, on the Rod Peterson Show, a couple of times. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, so I hope he can kind of, you know, get this team off on a good footing uh, to start the year. And... I, with Ottawa, they have so many good people in that organization that we've that we've met over the years, or that I I know from past experiences. So many great people, and I hope this is the year that they can maybe figure out how to take that next step as a team because they've just been struggling now for a couple of years after they had such a good run uh, in the mid 2010s. There, uh, obviously winning a Grey Cup, but also just having a lot of good seasons. So I'm hoping that this is the year that they can get that fan base a little bit. Uh, more confident in what they got going for them. They have some players there. Uh, now it's just a matter of putting it together. On Montreal's side, uh, like you said, Cody Pajaro's in town now. He used to be the, the Rough Rider quarterback here in Saskatchewan for uh, a good three or four years, whatever the number was. And, um, he, you know, he was a very fun quarterback to cheer for. Uh, he was a guy that you wanted to win. Uh, he's a very likable guy. Uh, he's a, he feels like a good leader. He feels like he'll do whatever it takes to win. Uh, so with Montreal, what they got, they got a winner. They got a guy who wants to win and can put their put his team in a position to win almost every single week. He's been that guy for years. How he's going to mesh with his new team is going to be very interesting. Montreal lost their best receiver last year, Geno Lewis. He's now in Edmonton, and we'll talk about him next probably. Um, and he's a very, very good player, very good player. And they lost – they've made a couple other changes as well. Uh, so it's going to be a matter of this is an interesting week for this game specifically Ottawa versus Montreal to start the season because these are probably the two teams with the most question marks um, I would say going into the season just yeah because there's been so many changes and you know they're out in the east where it's kind of wide open every year so we'll it see is. Uh, this it is. it's it's going to be yeah it's it's an interesting way to start the season because uh, both these teams really really want a W to start the year after how last year went for them uh, so. One of these teams is going to, you know, feel really good about their season coming out of this week. And one of these teams is, you know, the, their fan base is going to start asking questions. It's just how it's going to be. To the chat we go. And Ryan has this question for you. Will Cody Fajardo be successful in Montreal now that he has a reliable run game and an offensive line? Yeah, I mean, he does. That's, that's a very good point. And the offensive line last year in Saskatchewan brought nothing but uh, – 
what am I going to say? Jaw dropping, terrible results. <laughs> they, they couldn't it get anything awful, going. It, it was awful, man. It was awful. Yeah, it, it's been that way for a couple of years, but last year just kind of put uh, the icing on the cake, so to speak, in a bad way. It wasn't very yep. good icing. Uh, yep. <laughs> so this year, yeah, he's going to Montreal. And the, the funny thing is, Ryan, thanks for the question, by the way. Hi, Ryan. Uh, the funny thing is, is that, you know, last year a lot of questions got brought up about Cody Fajardo's relationship with Jason Moss, the offensive coordinator. Yes. Uh, Jason Moss gets fired because the year went so poorly. Jason right. Moss gets hired in Montreal as the head coach, which, you know, he's a great coach. I'm not going to say anything bad about Jason Moss. Uh, right. He's a great coach. He's been in the CFL for years. He he deserves another chance because he had a chance as a starting or as a starting coach. That's not what you call him, as a head coach. Uh, and it didn't go so well the first time, but he's paid his dues, and now he gets another chance. Very well deserved. Good. Uh, but we thought, you know, maybe his, the whole relationship with Fajardo and Moss didn't go well. Who right. does he bring in? Cody Fajardo. Cody Fajardo. Cody brings in. So either we were all mistaken uh, and they had a great relationship or he's putting himself in a really bad position to start the season and there's a new franchise that he's taking over as head coach. Uh, that's So we're going to find out really quickly whether they're on the same page and, and we were just mistaken last year uh, right. or – you know, if this is just not going to work, uh, we'll find out pretty soon. I don't think it's going to take very long, but yeah, Montreal historically has had, um, a, you know, a better offensive line the last couple of years. And on top of that, they do have some of the most, you know, ex they have William Stanbeck, you know, William Stanbeck has been probably the most, I would say he's, he's the best power back that this league mm -hmm. has right now uh, yep. outside of maybe Andrew Harris, but Andrew Harris is getting up there now. And William Stanback has just come in and, you know, he's had some injury issues and, and some other things going on, but he has always been uh, just a very hard to tackle kind of power running back. And it's going to mm -hmm. be exciting to see how Fajardo A utilizes him, maximizes him, and then how that might affect the passing game as well. So we'll see. Uh, but Montreal, like I said, Montreal, Ottawa, this is the type of game where uh, there's a lot of question marks around both teams. And after week one, it'll either be uh, jubilation on one side uh, and it's going to be, you know, a lot of concern on the other side. And now we finish the weekend, the opening weekend with this one, 7 p.m. on Sunday. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Edmonton Elks. And immediately we go to the Elks snatching Geno Lewis. How yeah. much will number 87 help their passing game? Yeah, well, there's that. And on the other side, Saskatchewan got longtime Elks receiver Darrell Walker on their right. side. So uh, right. now Gina Lewis, I met him in the offseason. He was in Regina for uh, some stuff. So I got to actually meet the guy. Uh, his confidence level is contagious. Uh, I felt like I was more confident in my football abilities just being around Gino Lewis last year. And I'm mm -hmm. not a football player by any stretch. I used to be, but not anymore. Uh, right. But this this guy, you know, sky's the limit for this guy. If he can be in the right system with the right quarterback, which could be the case in Edmonton. Um, you know, it was so funny. We were talking about how good he was last year. Uh, and I was with Nick Lewis. He was also with us. Nick Lewis is the all-time CFL reception king. He leads the league in all-time receptions. Uh, so we were talking. Nick Lewis was kind of egging him on a little bit to see, you know, you know, you did really good this year. And he's like, no, I didn't. And we were right. like, you, you, you had a thousand yards. You had all these you know, accomplishments. You're a um, most outstanding player candidate. Yeah, but I'm just getting started. That, that was, I could, that was barely scratching the surface. You know, that was, that was the kind of stuff we were getting from him. And to hear that, to hear his confidence level in his own ability, even though he's been in the league for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, to hear him say that he's, he's barely even scratching the surface. Edmonton fans need to be over the moon excited. Go buy his jersey. Like this is the kind of guy that you uh, you love as a fan base because he comes in and with the Elks being, uh, I don't want to say bottom feeders, but they have had a couple of rough years. They haven't won a home game in a couple of years, Brian. I mean, yeah. the fan base, the fact that their yeah. fan base is still sticking with them after this uh, last couple of years, uh, they deserve something. Now, I'm saying this as a Ryder fan, and they're involved in this game. Yep. Uh, I would I would love to see the Elks win this game. And, I, you know, I, I'm not cheering for them by any stretch. I'm actually cheering against them. But I think it would be a really good start for them. They're doing everything right on the business side. I've really appreciated how they've tried, tried to re-engage their fan base, again, after a couple of tough years. Um, with COVID and everything, and then coming in, and now they haven't won a home game in a couple of years. Like, it's, that's tough. 
uh, and they're doing guaranteed win nights. They're doing a whole bunch of ticket packaging, great pricing. They're changing up everything that they've been doing for the last little while. And I think they're, you know, them and BC, I feel like have kind of been the leaders the last couple of years in terms of how they've operated their teams. And that's no offense right. to any other team, but they're, they're doing stuff that teams haven't done in a while. So it's good to see. And as much as I'm cheering for the riders in this one, as a biased season ticket holder myself, uh, I would, I would love to see the Elks win a game. Sorry, rider fans. Uh, if that's like, you know, but I would love to see them get this one. I think it would really be a huge boost to not only their, their locker room, but just that fan base in general. Uh, it would make, it would be a huge one uh, for the Elks specifically. We haven't even talked about the riders yet. <laughs> it would be a huge one for the Elks. And with the riders, we got to start at the quarterback position. Whom do they turn to, to kick off the season? But who's going to be the most stable at that position? Because anyone around football, I've been calling games for 27 years, the most important position on offense is your quarterback. So where do the riders start? Yeah, definitely. It's going to be Trevor Harris. Uh, he was their big offseason uh, splash, uh, so to speak. And, you know, former Elk himself, he played in Edmonton for a little bit. So I'm sure he'll have uh, a lot on the line tonight, or not tonight, mm -hmm. this weekend. I uh, yep. don't want to get that win on under his belt. Um, but there's there's a lot of guys that are coming into this team that I think, you know, Ryder fans after a shaky year last year, um, they are there's a little bit of excitement here. Uh, they've added some offensive linemen, which is a huge concern. We're not sure where they stand right now in terms of health. Uh, Philip Blake was one of the bigger acquisitions. He's been around the league for a long time. Former Rough Rider coming back. I don't know if he's going to be playing. It doesn't sound like it. Um, and they signed Colin Kelly, who spent some time in the NFL, uh, but he's suspended for two games at least just because of some, uh, I think it was a uh, steroid suspension of some kind or something along those lines. Uh, so he's out for at least two weeks. But once the season gets rolling and they start maybe putting some pieces into place, I think the offensive line will be stabilized, which is important. It's it, the last couple of years, it's been a mess. Um, and we we talked about that with not only Montreal, but with Saskatchewan, how much of a mess the uh, offensive line has been. Let's stay on the uh, Saskatchewan offense. Who's going to tote the yeah. ball for him? Yeah, so luckily for them, uh, the Riders running back issue, like that haven't been an issue. Uh, they have a couple of guys um, that came in last year kind of as unknowns, but have sort of, you know, again, I'm going to use the word stabilized because again, mm -hmm. it just feels like sometimes when you don't have a person in that position, it just feels right. like a big mess. You don't know what's going on, but they got Frankie Hickson, who he's a, he's a smaller back. And I say smaller, he's five, eight, but he's 200 pounds. Like he's, he's built well. And he just seems like one of those guys that he can, he can break any play into a touchdown at any moment. Yep. That's the kind of player he seems like uh, he might not be the best North and South runner, but if he gets a cut on you, Frankie Hickson is the type of guy who can not. break any play for 30, 40, 50 yards. Oh, uh, man. But their starting guy is going to be Jamal Morrow. And again, not necessarily the biggest running back, 5'8", again, 205, so built well. But he's the type of guy who you're going to rely on to get six yards, five yards every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the CFL, five or six-yard averages, that's good. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. Anything below that. Uh, with only three downs. And again, for Americans who might not realize, you know, the difference is, is if you don't get five or six yards on a rush on your first down, it's yeah. second and long and you're about to punt. Uh, yeah. So the six, five to six yards on a first down on a run, on a run play is very important. So if you can't get that, like I said, and that was, that was one of the bigger issues last year with the offensive line struggles, they couldn't seem to get the running game consistent, which led to them having to run around and, and try to throw out of the pocket a lot. And mm -hmm. it was just, it wasn't working. Uh, we all know how that went last year. So this year, yeah. you bring in you bring in 37 year old Trevor Harris, and again, he's he's going to be the guy. They they invested a lot in him in the offseason. They do have some other quarterbacks there, and they're keeping four quarterbacks on the roster, which was an interesting decision. A lot of talk about that right. around these parts. Uh, right. Usually, you only keep three. Sometimes you only dress two: the starter and a backup. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're keeping four, and they're not going to dress four every every week, obviously. But right. uh, some very interesting options behind Trevor Harris. Uh, Shea Patterson's a, a name that Americans might recognize from Michigan. Uh, yep. He had an interesting run, I think, in the XFL or the USFL, one of the two. Yeah, um, USFL. Thank you, uh, Jake Dolagala, Central Connecticut guy, six foot seven. Mm -hmm. um, now it's funny because oftentimes down south. We see six foot seven, two hundred and forty two pound quarterback, and you're like, okay, this guy's got the makings of quarterback. Right. Uh, up north, up here, tall quarterbacks don't usually do well. And no. I don't know why. No, they don't. 
there hasn't been a tall quarterback in the CFL that has been successful. Uh, I think somebody said since like 2014, there was a quarterback who played the whole season six foot six. I can't even remember his name off yep. the top of my head, uh, but it's been a long time. So for whatever reason in the CFL, it, you know, the, the magic uh, window is like six foot to six, three. And if you're anywhere outside of that, you know, it's weird. It's a weird league in that regard, but uh, Dola Gala has shown some signs. So who knows, but Mason fine is their other guy. He was kind of their backup last year. A uh, guy out of North Texas, uh, 5'11", 190. Again, kind of that magic zone in terms of CFL quarterbacks. He's just on the bottom end of it, but um, right. he's showing some signs. So anyways, Trevor Harris, I, I'm digress, I, I, I digress. Uh, he's had a lot of experience in this league as the type of guy who will calm everything down. Uh, he's a very uh, good pocket passing quarterback. He has a little bit of athleticism, but he is 37. So we'll see how much that actually comes into play. But again, mm -hmm. he's he's a very steady quarterback who's put up a lot of big number seasons. There's always been a bit of a concern about the big moment with him. And yeah. I don't want to you know talk too much about that because I really respect Trevor Harris as a quarterback. I love the addition. Um, and I think with him coming in as a veteran uh, presence who can stabilize the offense and kind of calm things down. Because last year, it just seemed like every time they snapped the ball, it was panic. Yes. So this year, if, if he yes. can just calm down and keep it steady, make the plays when we need to make the plays and just march, march the field. It's been a while since we've had a team that can consistently march the field. Actually, honestly, since probably Cody Fajardo's first year, it seems like uh, with the team, uh, they mm -hmm. were able to march the field lots that year. But since then, it's kind of been very inconsistent. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of the addition of Trevor Harris. And I think it'll be, uh, I think it's the right move for this team. And he's here for two years on a two-year deal. So um, year one's going to be, you know, a good kind of a measuring stick. And then we'll see if that translates into maybe two years with Trevor Harris or maybe longer, depending on how long he wants to play. Uh, but we'll find out this weekend uh, kind of how the team's looking to at least start the season. That's my good buddy, Producer Clark, talking all things CFL. You can expect that every Friday as we break down the week before, take you into the continuing week. And, man, I love having you on. I love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much for coming on today. I appreciate it. Always love doing it, Brian. Let's do it again next week. We'll do it again next week. Thank you. For those of you who know Producer Clark, the fabulous super producer of the Rob Peterson Show, he will join uh, every week. As part of our CFL programming, we got a new CFL show coming out where you will see this interview and a whole lot more. My time is up. Hope you all enjoy it. Have a great weekend. God bless y'all. And I will see y'all on Monday. So long, everybody. <laughs>